Hundred years ago, in India at about 10 o'clock p.m., two little girls left the orphanage and started howling at the moon. Witnesses said that the girls' eyes were glowing blue and they no longer resembled human beings. Some believe these children were raised by wolves, but actually to become a wild animal, you do not need to be raised in a pack. You just need to watch this video to the end. Let's go. What happens if you put on a crocodile costume and dive into a pond full of real predators? Well, it seems obvious this won't do you any good, right? Actually, it's a little more complicated. Sometimes nothing happens at all. Meet Gary Sarage, who knows a thing or two about alligators, seems like he devoted most of his life to these scary animals, caught thousands of them, and managed to figure them out. Attention, don't try to repeat the experiment. This can be dangerous for your life. Gary has been dealing with alligators so long, he can recognize the danger in time, but turns out the suit and the good position of the body make him almost invisible to predators. Invisible? As a human, Seems like alligators easily mistake Gary for one of their own kin. While he splashes in the water with him or crawl across the lawn, he can even touch the animals and they will not flee or attack him. Alligators perceive the situation as something quite normal. But that works only until Gary gets on his feet. Is it just the suit? Is it enough to dress up as a crocodile, a lion, or I don't know, some kind of ostrich for the animals to mistake you for their own kin? Or is it enough just to move like they do? It starts to get confusing. Many animals respond to general visual stimuli, the presence of a new object, its size behavior, even sudden movement. For example, prey can identify a predator by its shape, size, and color, and determine the threat by assessing actions. You have to admit a predator that's already eating someone is less dangerous than a predator that approaches and looks right at you while licking his lips. So what looks like an alligator and moves like an alligator is perceived by other alligators as, well, an alligator. But if a human decides to just crawl closer to the predator without any disguise, yeah, in short, don't do that. But of course, people who figured out how animal perception works could not ignore the new knowledge. They learned how to use it. Also, for the animal's sake, you probably know that pandas have issues with procreating, which means that every panda cub is incredibly valuable to the planet. Of course, they need to be taken care of. But imagine that you are this panda cub over your short life. You have not seen anyone but your mother, and then a skinny hairless creature approaches you. Yes, this is horrifying. It doesn't matter what the intentions of this terrible creature are to care for you or to bite your head off. To reduce the stress, the cubs experience, the rangers of the Chengdu Wildlife Sanctuary in China wear panda costumes. It looks hilarious and also a little creepy to keep stressed to a minimum. The sanctuary workers use smells. Would you agree to not just put on a panda costume but also smear it with various animal secretions? Well, you got to do what it takes for the comfort and safety of the cubs, but it's also important that they do not get used to humans because pandas will have to live in the wild. The suit also works in this situation, and this approach is also used with other animals. For example, with birds. And yes, I also imagined a wildlife sanctuary employee with huge false wings, but usually you don't need much to trick chicks to feed them people put on a hand or something like an artificial bird, which just as a mother should give food to babies from beak to beak. This is necessary so that in the future, they'll learn to find food on their own, not relying on human help. I would say the bird hand looks realistic, but the chicks don't seem to be too picky, or are they just not smart enough? It's clear that man is the top dog among all the inhabitants of the planet when it comes to intelligence. But is it really so easy to fool animals? In fact, they're not as silly as they might seem. Strictly speaking, some animals are not that different from humans. They can recognize themselves in a mirror, have their own languages, can create tools, solve puzzles, be cunning, feel joy, sadness, or even grieve. Some people have a way smaller emotional range. Just because you've got the emotional range of a teaspoon. But if this is the case, why do animals so easily believe the most simple, ridiculous deception? As I said, many of them rely primarily on visual cue. It works kind of like Akan's razor, but in the wilderness. In short, you can describe it this way. Keep it simple. If in a place where hippos live, you see something that looks like a hippo, 
then it's most likely a hippo, not eight. No acrobats in a suit. It's difficult to blame animals for this point of view, but don't think that everything is limited to visual inspection. Many animals rely on chemical signals like smell, also tactile and auditory signals, all in order to recognize who they see in front of them. For example, a toadfish recognizes the voices of dolphins, one of the primary predators, and in response decreases the intensity of its activity. Well, you know, a familiar approach. If you don't move, they won't see you. What about dogs? Hardly anyone would argue that they are damn smart. Well, in most cases, the first thing that dogs look at is the appearance of the creature and only then activate their sense of hearing scent and desire to lick. That's why a masked man, even if he's a beloved owner, will confuse the dog. These animals are used to reading our facial expressions and they know exactly what their owner looks like. No wonder that a mask, whether that's a medical mask or some kind of horse mask confuses them completely because the minds of animals can't comprehend the idea that one creature can pretend to be another, I mean pretend so well. That's why various mimicry tricks work, and that's why a costume store for lions would quickly go broke. Some animals even manage to create something like armor that helps them survive. The masked hunter is a large assassin bug that uses sand to create an Iron Man costume at the nymph stage. That is in adolescence, though its suit is not made of iron. The surface of the nymph's body emits a sticky liquid where sand, dust, pollen, and other small particles get stuck. This is the way the insect disguises itself from enemies and becomes less attractive to them. Imagine you drop a lollipop in the sand and stuff sticks to it. Well, who would want to eat this? But this is all a visual component, and it's pretty obvious. I'd like to talk about smells. Let's not talk about those scented panda costumes, yuck. Let's better talk about the bees. Well, you know, if you put the scent of the queen bee on your body, then the entire swarm may well follow you. So why not use this? Not with bees. Of course, bees are too boring. Why not try this when you can start hunting a tigress? A predator named Avni was believed to launch at least 13 deadly attacks on people, but they could not catch it and then a secret weapon came into play. A Calvin Klein perfume. It sounds absurd but the musky notes and the perfume often influence animals. Putting them into a sort of trance, the hunters hope to confuse envy, neutralize it with a tranquilizer and transport it to another place. But the tigress turned out to be too smart and did not succumb to the magic of the smell, which can't be said about other animals. Many are so susceptible to smell. You can even get a coyote to patrol your garden, just need to spread his urine around the perimeter and no rodent will damage your rose bushes. You can even do without a real coyote. It smells is enough. No wonder humanity has come up with the idea of selling these fragrances, and you know I'm not sure if this is a good or a bad thing. Every hunter knows that a bottle of deer urine will easily make other deer follow the scent, sometimes encounter sad consequences. All they think about is that a female or relatives are waiting for them here and instead, they find human. Not the best alternative. Well, it seems like I figured it all out. Smells, behavior, animal costumes, but can you really grow up in a pack of wolves and become a wolf yourself? There are a lot of doubts about that story about two girls from India, and so scientists often call it fake. There's not enough evidence, and the ones that exist look more like they were made up later. What's with the eyes glowing blue? Today, they probably say that the girls are related to the White Walkers, However, there are stories of children raised by animals, and they are much more credible. Marina Chapman claims she has lived in the jungle with the monkeys and apparently she's not lying. Marcos Rodriguez Pantoja has lived for 12 years with wolves in southern Spain. Several children were taken care of by dogs at once when their parents abandoned them, and there are also stories about goats, sheep, bears, and even ostriches. Can a human who grew up with animals become part of their flock? I think so. After all, they may treat him as a bald weakling, but still a member of the family. After all, we all have a weird relative. See you later.